we warmly acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land from which we are coming to you. We pay respect to Elders past and present and all First Nations peoples who have told their stories on these lands for many thousands of years. Arnold Zabel, congratulations on being named the 2021 recipient of the Australia Council Lifetime Achievement in Literature Award. Thank you, Michael. And so, Arnold, you know, after after such such a, a long and productive career, what does it mean for you to receive this award? Well, when I received the news, I was in one of my favourite riding spots, which is down by the ri the river, the Fairfield Boathouse Cafe. I, I was elated, uh, and and I felt a great sense of lightness. I felt uh, a kind of weight, a kind of burden, uh, lift off my shoulders. It, it is a privileged uh, vocation, but it's also one that doesn't you know, come without struggle. Yeah, I, I feel very moved by it. I think, yes, I think at the heart of literature is empathy and compassion and, uh, uh, and putting yourself in other people's shoes and seeing it through their eyes. Uh, and it becomes a great pleasure uh, to, be, to do this. I write a lot in cafes because I like the sense of humanity around me of being connected. So, yes, I think it's at the heart of what it is to be a writer and a storyteller. If someone asks me what's, what's the most important thing about being a writer, I would say it's you have to be alert and you have to be a good listener. To, to be a storyteller, first you have to be a good listener. So to get back to the heart of it, which is conversation, really it's conversation and, and being alert. Sociology, psychology, all these other disciplines, there's something else. But story is the art of the specific. It has to be seen, it has to be heard, it has to be tasted. A story that's very special to me is The Dust of Life, which is set in Vietnam. I was drawn to go with a rucksack on my back to a war zone. The young Australians were being conscripted. And so I went and I spent that extraordinary time in Saigon at the height of the Vietnam War in the summer of 69, 70. And I meet this kid, a street kid. He takes me out. And he sits down at a, a restaurant in in uh, pockmarked with bullets that had been because of the Tet Offensive that took place. And he takes out a packet of tobacco. That's important that he takes out a packet of tobacco. You know, you can, the story can wait. And he rolls the cigarette and he's sucking away. And, and I'm looking at a at just a kid's face. And then the next thing, uh, I'm looking at a hardened face. A 14 year old is already hardened to life. And then he's telling me, Two years ago, my village was bombed and I'm running from the flames and I turned back and I realised I'd never see my parents alive again. And at that moment, it shifts. It's the mirror straight away and it shifts from witness to subject. So, Arnold, after many decades, four decades of writing, many memorable passages and chapters in your books, are there any that really stand out to you now that somehow crystallise what it was you wanted to achieve? Well, there's a passage, actually, it's the beginning of my novel, Sea of Many Returns. And I, I love reading it aloud. And also, I think it just says a lot about what storytelling means to me, what writing means to me. The story you are about to be told is a fairy tale, a romance. There will be time enough later to tear it to shreds. In the meantime, sit back and become a child again. Is there not enough darkness in the world? Come, sit by the fire. Allow the voice of the storyteller to soothe you while you gaze at the flames. Perhaps it is an uncle, a grandmother, perhaps a lifelong friend. The day has drawn to an end. Your work is done. Outside, a storm is brewing. The wind is rising. It mocks the seas and rattles the shutters, but inside, the fire is burning and the fire loves you. Aki tu paramedio. The fairy tale begins. Kalisperesas. Good evening to you. Arnold, it's a wonderful passage and I can see why you chose it, the kind of magic circle of storytelling. You've had um, support at various times from from the Australia Council and the, and the Literature Board. Has that been an important thing for you? 
I'm very moved. I'm very touched by this, you know, that people are willing to put in time and resources and, and I think love, love into the work that I'm doing. It's been an extraordinary experience looking at it just from a point of view of receiving fellowships and grants. They're probably books that I would have struggled, struggled to, to really, really do them justice if I hadn't had the time to, to, to sit with them and to spend time on them. Yeah, I think the Australia Council has, has been an important part in fostering a literary culture or, or, you know, other areas of the arts. So, Arnold, your most recent book, which we published last year, is The Water Mill. Are there any passages there that um, uh, have special significance in the life of that book? Yes, I can, I, a few come to mind. Um, we're sitting in a car, gridlocked in Phnom Penh, this passage takes us to the heart of the matter. There are moments that cut deep in the memory, and this is one of them. All the elements are assembled. The story and the enclosed space in which it is being told. The city so close, yet cut off from hearing. The stillness accentuates the melodious flow of Naron's voice. It shifts in energy and the occasional falter. I register each change in tone and expression, the slight shaking of her head in disbelief that such things had happened. I feel the gravity of what she is recalling, acutely aware of my own voice as it breaks the silences with questions. I am suspicious of that voice and fearful of reopening old wounds, fearful of what the telling is doing to the teller, but also possessed by a sense of obligation to hear Naram out. I cannot help but pursue the story. Arnold, that's wonderful. And um, we're all very grateful to you for pursuing the story. And the story you know, is the currency that you've given us to enrich our lives. So uh, we're delighted that you're the recipient of the Australia Council Lifetime Award in 2021 for literature. Well, thank you so much.